Bobby Torres of Fretbox Recording here to share with you my top five tips on how to achieve better mixes way faster. Tip number one, use markers within your session. In other words, mark off every single section of the song that you're working on. Okay, if you look here, I have a typical metal song, nothing crazy. I have the intro marked off, the verse marked off, the pre-chorus marked off, the chorus marked off. I have everything marked off. Now you may be wondering, what the heck does this have to do with mixing? What does marking off sections of your song have to do with mixing at all? Well. For me, it makes a huge difference. In other words, if I'm working on a chorus and I wanna quickly compare the first chorus to the second chorus, with a click of a button, all I would have to do is click on chorus one. And that is my first chorus. Now, without having to you know, scramble through the rest of the song, all I have to do now is go to chorus two, click on chorus two, and that's my second chorus. Or if I wanna to go to my intro, that's my intro. If I wanna to go to my pre-chorus, that's my pre-chorus. If I want to go to my outro, that's my outro. If I want to go to, I don't know, the post-chorus after the second chorus, it's right there. Uh, this makes things way more efficient, especially when you're working on a high volume of music. Not only that, but it gives you a nice visual representation of your entire song. So visually, you know where you're at. So if you're working on, let's say, a drum edit or something like that, and sometimes if you're deep within an edit, you'll kind of forget where you're at. If you just look above and see, okay, I'm in the first chorus, and you know, oh, I like that fill from the first chorus, I can then later stick that same fill into the second chorus, you could quickly get there without having to wonder if you're in the right spot or not, even visually. Because yes, you should use your ears, but having visual cues like that, or like a visual roadmap, when you're putting in long hours mixing, makes a huge difference. Tip number two, get your track layout, naming, and color coding in order. Keeping your track ordering and uh, color coding and layout consistent day after day, month after month, year after year will speed up your workflow tenfold. Trust me. I used to be very disorganized. I'd have my drums all over the place. I'd have guitars before drums. I'd have guitars 10 different colors. Uh, and it just was always a nightmare, especially when the track counts are high. Because remember, if you're working on music that's not yours, which nowadays I do more and more, I end up mixing other people's projects, I have to systemize in order to be efficient, right? And also when you're efficient like this, you could stay more in the creative zone and you don't disrupt your flow state, which for me is a huge deal. I always want to be in that flow state. So if you look here, here are all my drums. For me, generally my drums are purple. Not all the time, but for the most part, they're all, or at least they're all one color. So in this case, they're all purple. My bass is greenish blue. Teal, I guess. Turquoise. Teal, turquoise, whatever. Uh, my guitars are brown. My lead guitars are red. My vocals are purple. My violins are a different shade of purple. And my synth is yellow. Um, I always keep for me personally, I like this layout. I keep my drums first. And I also keep the individual drums in the same order time after time again. So in other words, I always have kick first, snare second, snare bottom, toms, cymbals, and then rooms. Um, and after that, I like to follow it up with bass and then guitars, because I kind of think of it how I EQ my instruments. In other words, my um, kick drum sits the lowest and bass above that, and then guitars above that, and vocals and everything else above that. So I kind of like to, I don't know, for me it makes sense. I'll let, even when I mix live, I prefer to have drums first, bass, guitars, leads, vocals, and then all the extra stuff like backing tracks and strings and uh, special effects I keep last. I'm so OCD, I even keep the same color coding when I'm mixing on a live console, um, when I'm doing front of house. I try to always keep my drums purple and my guitar is brown and so on and so forth. And when you're working with a DAW, you could set up your DAW to automatically color your files the same color that the tracks that they're sitting within. So if you look here, very simple, all my drums are purple. My bass is that tealish turquoise, teal turquoise, teal turquoise. Um, my guitars are brown, my lead guitars are red, and so on and so forth. So when I'm editing or I'm you know, working on the actual file itself and not within the mixer, it just keeps things very nice and clean and organized for me. I'm a huge fan of organization and systemization. I feel like it helps my creative process. And again, like I said previously, it keeps me in that flow state at all times. Tip number three, intentionally limit your effects, and more specifically, limit the amount of plugins that you use. Now you may be wondering, how in the world can limiting my plugins actually help me become a better mixer? Well, I'll tell you how. By limiting your options, you end up learning the plugins that you're using way better. I've been using the same plugins for 13 years at this point. Yes, once in a while I'll buy a new one, and then I'll end up not using it. But anyway, that's a whole other story. Um, I know my plugins inside and out, front to back. 
By learning your tools inside and out, it will keep you in that artistic state of mind. Now, it's very easy to get caught up in the trap of always buying new gear, always buying new plugins, but I can promise you that is not going to improve your mixes. A lot of the plugins I use are the stock Pro Tools plugins. Yes, I've bought tons and tons and tons of other ones. I spent thousands on plugins, but the ones I always go back to, you know, as an example, stock Pro Tools delay, stock Pro Tools reverb, I use the stock Pro Tools EQ as well all the time because I've been using Pro Tools for so long, I know these tools extremely well. Back in the day when there were only analog consoles, these guys would know the ins and outs of an SSL because that's all they had and they became monster mixers because they knew their tools inside and out. They weren't changing their console every five seconds. Unfortunately, in the digital world, it's very easy to get carried away with that. But anyway, I digress. So the way I like to work, and it helps with my workflow in a tremendous way, is I like to keep my effects minimal. If you look, I do not use a lot of plugins. I have uh, channel strip on each drum. Uh, I have nothing on my rhythm and lead guitars. That's because I EQ and compress the buses, their submixes, which I'll get to in a second. Um, same thing with violins. Vocals have some, some plugins going on. Um, and that's it. And also my send effects, I've mentioned this in a previous video, I only use four to six-ish send effects. That's it. I don't have 17 reverbs going on in the session. I choose one reverb and all of the instruments share that same reverb. That's not to say that you should never, you know, create different reverbs for your vocals or guitars. Yes, there are always exceptions, but for me, I try to always keep things as minimal and clean as possible. Um, so yeah, that's it. Just four different set effects, a slap delay, mono delay, a stereo delay, and a reverb. That is all. You could totally achieve amazing sounding productions with very simple tools. Trust me. Tip number four. Simplify your routing. You do not need 1,700 different submixes. Um, I get sessions in that I, you know, people send me Pro Tools sessions to, to work off of, to, to mix or continue their mix, and I see crazy stuff. Mono submixes, stereo submixes, submixes going into submixes, submixes going into submixes that are going into other submixes. It's insane. You do not need to make your routing that complicated. Again, just like with the plugins thing, it really takes me out of the creative zone. I'm constantly trying to figure out where everything's going and it's not doing anything musical to the sound. As a matter of fact, it might make things sound worse because you're overcomplicating things with over EQ, uh, over compression and things like that. So again, just to use this session as an example, I have my drums just going to the drum submix. I have my guitars, my rhythm guitars going to a uh, rhythm guitar submix. My leads going to a lead guitar submix. Vocals going to a vocal submix. And strings going to a string submix. This synth track here is, is routed directly to the master fader. So that's my approach to routing. I like to keep things as clean and simple as possible. And I always keep my submixes for the most part in red and they're labeled submix. Super simple, just like working on an analog console. So here are my send effects and here are my submixes. And every time I open a session, I make sure it's the exact same way. I have my tracks, you know, my audio tracks from left to right, uh, always in the same order. And then I have my submixes and then I have my effects and then my master fader. That is all the same way every single time. I'm not saying that you should arrange your session exactly the same way that I do. Come up with your own system and be consistent with it. That's the key. Consistency is key. It will help you focus on the music itself. At tip number five, and here's the big one. Remove tracks that are not needed. You do not need eight guitar tracks for a heavy guitar sound. You do not need 17 mics on a snare. You do not need to quadruple every single vocal part throughout every single part of every single song. You do not need to do it. Simplify. Uh, a lot of the times when people send me stuff to mix, I notice most of the microphones are completely unusable on the guitar cab. I pick one microphone that I like the most and I completely ditch the rest. Maybe two. Maybe two, but for the most part, it's generally one that's the one I like the most and I run with it. More tracks does not equal a bigger sound. Trust me, whether you're producing your own music, recording another artist, or mixing a project that you didn't record at all and you're just the mixing engineer, really think to yourself, is this fifth mic on the bass cab really necessary? Should the chorus vocals really have five layers going on at once that are all flaming with each other and making the vocal sound very blurry? You may be surprised by removing extra tracks that you don't need, your sound will actually be bigger and punchier because there's less going on and everything that is happening in the mix has its own purpose and has its own identity sonically. Now I know these tips were not super duper quick fixes, but believe me, these are things that I've heard professionals say when I started out that I completely ignored. My sessions used to be a disaster. I would stick a million mics on a guitar cab. None of my stuff was labeled. 
terrible. My file management was a disaster and my projects would take forever. As I've gained more and more experience, I realized that less really is more. Organization is everything. Running your sessions the same way every time really does help the efficiency and the creative environment in general. Now, I hope you can incorporate these five tips within your workflow so you can really concentrate on the stuff that actually matters, like the music itself. Okay, if you found this video helpful, please like, comment, subscribe, and share. And don't forget to click the little bell icon in order to be notified every time I upload one of my weekly videos on all things metal and rock production. You can both like and follow me on Facebook and Instagram. Links are in the description. And don't forget to download my quick EQ guide that contains all of my EQ settings that I always return to when starting a mix. There is a link in the description below. Until next time, happy mixing.